Hello, everybody. Before we jump into today's episode, we have two sponsors we want to say thank you to for supporting this show. The first one is Routine. You guys have heard me talk about Routine, honestly, back from the early days of the podcast, and it's still a product I use every single morning. They have a prompt for me here. I'm going to do a little impromptu on this ad read today because, honestly, this is a product that I truly believe in, and so I'm, going to, I'm just going to tell you guys exactly what I think and why. First and foremost, um, this is a stat that they shared, but when you sleep, you lose between a pound and a pound and a half of water, and most of that's just sweating while you sleep. Um, I used to not know if that was actually true, to be honest. I felt like a pound to a pound and a half of water seemed like quite a bit while I slept. But the one thing I did constantly pay attention to when I started using routine was just the fact that before using routine, I always felt a little dehydrated in the morning. And, and I'm one of those people that when I get up, I get up really early usually. I work out. One of, the, one of the first things I do is some form of fitness. It's just like what I do before everyone's awake. And so it's very easy for me to grab a coffee, you know, pre-workout, an energy drink, something with caffeine in it, and just go. When I am good about using routine first, I basically take, they come in these little single serve packets. Um, they contain half an organic lemon, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, Himalayan sea salt, all six essential electrolytes, and they have no sugar in them at all. A lot of hydration products are going to have sugar. So one of the things routine one of the things about routine that I love is that there's no sugar in there. Um, so when I am good about doing this consistently, I will take one of those single serve packets, I'll throw it in my mixer bottle. And whether I also put in a pre-workout or something with caffeine, or I just drink that separately, I try to drink that first. And the days I do that, I do genuinely feel hydrated and just have a different form of clarity all morning. A lot of people have tried to make their own homemade versions of routine, right? You see people making, they take an, a, a shot of the apple cider vinegar and they put a little sea salt, a little lemon in a drink. This is essentially that, but in a product that you can take with you on the go, have it ready for you first thing in the morning. I know me personally, when I'm groggy rolling out of bed, the last thing I want to do is, you know, squeeze a lemon, cut lemons up, go get the apple cider vinegar, find my sea salt. I just rip this packet open, throw it in my water, drink it, and it's good to go. You can try yours today. If you haven't tried it yet and you've been listening to this podcast for years, just try the damn routine. Give it a shot. You can use code ShaneWhite30 and get 30% off your first order. So you get 30% off by using code ShaneWhite30 and go to yourroutine.com. To make it even easier, I've added the link to yourroutine.com in the show notes. So just click on the show notes for this episode. Click on the link to yourroutine.com and don't forget to use code ShaneWhite30. All right, guys, today's episode is also bought to you by, bought to you, it's brought to you by NeuroRoast. Again, I'm going to go a little off script here. NeuroRoast is a product that I also came across during this year of 2023. They are a, a coffee brand, coffee company that's helping you optimize your brain function and overall well-being. This is another product that, to be honest with you, when I first started working with it, I was a little on the fence. I was like, do I really want to have mushrooms in my coffee? Well, folks, I will tell you when I use NeuroRoast, one of the things that has stood out to me the most is in, well, I'll back up. People that know me know that I have way too much caffeine, typically. One of the things this year I've done a good job of is cutting out alcohol. Not completely, but predominantly, I don't touch a lot of alcohol anymore. What I think I've actually done the other way, though, is add a lot more caffeine. So I do, I do definitely drink too much caffeine. That's something I need to work on next year is to try to minimize how much of that, but NeuroRoast is something that has actually helped me. Because of the way they've formulated their coffee, like unlike regular coffee, which is you know still something I consume, but NeuroRoast specifically um, doesn't cause jitters or crashes. Mushroom coffee provides a more balanced and sustained energy, allowing you to stay focused and productive throughout the day. So the times I do use NeuroRoast, I'll be honest, I, I just don't feel that jittery, like Ugh, I'm jumping out of my chair or standing here at my desk, jumping around feeling. So give NeuroRoast a try. They have some really good flavors. I'll be honest too, the two guys that started NeuroRoast are just really good, really good dudes based out of New York and uh, they're hustling and, and hopefully they can, they can get some people to try NeuroRoast this holiday season um, by listening to this podcast. So for you folks who've been on the fence, I'm telling you, it tastes delicious. They've done a fantastic job of making this coffee not only be functional, but taste fantastic. And if you want to try NeuroRoast, you can use code Shane White. So it's super simple. Just Shane White at checkout. Um, 
you'll also get 30% off. So if you go to neurorose.com, and once again, I have added that to the show notes. So just click into the show notes while you're listening to this episode, you can click on neurorose link directly. Don't forget to use code just Shane white, and you'll get 30% off your order. Um, hope you guys love both these products. I'm trying to not only bring you guys products that I use, but that I believe in on the podcast. Uh, I'm not taking ad reads for any brands that I don't really believe in. So anyway, hope you guys love both those products, yourroutine.com and neurorose.com. I've added those links to the show notes. I uh, hope you guys love it. And I got an awesome guest coming up right after this. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Shane White Show. I'm excited today. Today was going to be a fun episode with a fun founder who I've actually been talking to for a long time on LinkedIn. I've had a couple of phone calls with him and I'm not going to call him out on here, but he totally blew off the podcast and I could have just as easily gone back to work and, and moved on and, and not recorded a podcast this week, most likely. But I'm at instead going to just do a solo one, which I haven't done in a couple of years. I looked back just a second ago while I was waiting, and I got a lot of questions from the last podcast, which was with Megan and, and Michael Hyatt, the founders of the Full Focus Planner. And I thought today could be a really interesting, shorter episode with just me. It's been, again, it's been a long time since I've just done a solo podcast by myself. And the reason I thought it'd be interesting to do this, and I, honestly, this is v very impromptu, <laughs> haven't prepped anything. Um, well, number one, I got a new setup. If you guys watch the podcast, you notice I normally have this big microphone arm that comes in from the side. And I realize when I just do these virtually in front of you know a camera and using my laptop, that I should get something nice. So I was like, hey, I got this new little arm set up that looks a lot better. It's not covering half of my my face with the the camera. And so I said, hey, I, I got this new thing overnighted from Amazon. I don't want to not put out an episode this week. I have, I have some big aspirational goals this year for the podcast. I had a plan to interview someone I was really excited about. They for whatever reason, no, you know, hopefully they're okay and everything's good. Uh, they They blew off the podcast, which doesn't happen very often. And instead of just not doing anything, today we're going to talk about getting 1% better. And that's going to sound very cliche. I totally get that. But I think the, the key to the recent podcast I did, and the reason I was so excited to put out this podcast with Megan and Michael Hyatt, was because of the process that I've gotten into, I think can help anyone out there who listens to this. I know I have a lot of people who listen, who are from different walks of life, different stages of life from a lot of different industries. And no matter if you are in the middle of building something, no matter if you've always wanted to build something, and even if it's neither one of those. So, you know, I obviously always like talking about entrepreneurship on here. I've had a lot of founders on here, but even if it's just being 1% better with your family, being 1% better in your regular day job, whatever that may be, could be 1% better with your nutrition or in the gym. This episode, I hope, resonates with someone out there because I did get quite a few questions after the Megan and Michael podcast last week about the Full Focus Planner, how I use it. And I just wanted to walk through that. So really, this, this episode, if, if you're curious about what their product is, I am not endorsed by them. I just generally love them. Um, I mentioned on that podcast, if you if you did listen, you heard this already, but I've been using the Full Focus Planner for roughly three years now. I think it's been at least three years, uh, or this will be my third year, I guess. So right around when, when Kyle and I started Noble Partners, that's when I actually started using this. And I do think, you know, whether it's for me, if, if you know me or follow me on social media, you know, there's a few, few really big key important things in my life. Obviously, Noble Partners, my business, this podcast, my family, and my health. And when I say health, a lot of people know me as the guy that does lots of lunges. Um, I enjoy doing functional fitness, CrossFit type things in my home gym. And so all of these things are components that I build into my full focus planner. 
And so for everyone listening, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you're watching, I actually recommend popping over to Spotify. You can watch the video or going to YouTube. You can also see the video, but I'm going to try to actually flash up the full focus planner a little bit and just show you guys some of the prompts um, just so you guys can kind of see. So the, the first thing, which I think is really powerful, which I was never one of these people for the longest time was sitting down and actually planning out annual goals. A lot of people say they have goals. A lot of people are, say they are not goal setters, right? There's, I think there's a, there's a huge camp of people that don't truly have yearly goals. And I was one of those people for most of my life, really until 28, 29. I never had legitimate written down goals, I would say. I've, I had aspirational goals. I always said I wanted to start my own business. I've always had financial goals. I've always had family goals, fitness goals in my head, or I would say them out loud, but there wasn't anything that was really holding me accountable, I guess is the right way to put it. The full focus planner, what it forces you to do. So I'm holding it up. This is what it looks like. Mine's a little beat up because I actually ripped out something in the front that I'll show all of you. Um, but this is the planner. It's a simple planner. It's nothing fancy or flashy. What I like about it, though, is I rip out the, the first few pages, which is where you put your name, and it just got some like intro pages explaining what the planner is. I actually rip it out, and I'm going to kind of flash those up. The first page for me is all 10 of my goals so far this year. And, and what I think is really powerful about that is every day when I start my day, I open to this page, and every day it's just a quick reminder of all of the things that are the macro targets that I'm trying to accomplish this year. I think when you have that dead set right in front of you, there is something to be said about just something simple on paper reminding you, hey, this is what I'm setting out to do this year. Um, I heard a quote, and I'm going to butcher this, but basically a man without goals is like a ship without a rudder. So what happens is you wake up every day and you just react. And, and I'm sure some of you can resonate with this. I, for so long, and for the first almost decade of my working career, just reacted to whatever was coming my way, to whatever that fire drill was that morning. And time after time, you know, days would go by, things were getting done. I was really busy, but I wasn't achieving anything. Weeks would go by, still not making any progress towards something I wanted to achieve. Months go by. And then eventually the year goes by and you look back and you say, shit, I didn't move any closer to a goal that I truly wanted to accomplish. This planner, you basically <clears throat> need a new one every quarter. So what's interesting is, you know, you set up your, your annual goals, but you put which quarter you're trying to achieve those goals by. <clears throat> they recommend you do, you know, no more than two or three of these do per quarter. I actually most of mine are full year goals. So what that means is I have a couple on here that I want to achieve by the end of Q1 and Q2, but actually 95% of my goals on here are actually by the end of the year. I want to achieve these things. Just the way I work, <clears throat> and most of these are just, you know, they're and they're inevitably full year goals. So that that's the first process. And and I actually recommend if anyone wants to try to use one of these full focus planners or just a process like this in general, I actually don't start in here. It's not like I start brainstorming in this planner. I actually start just with a, an Apple notes, just a blank sheet. And I just start brainstorming. Uh, I kind of, I'm very analytical. So I like to, I like to really build out a framework. And for me, that looks like putting the big buckets on there first. So, you know, family, health, business, podcast, my marriage, finances, I have like these big buckets that I know I want to have some sort of goal within those. And that helps me kind of get started. And then I just start brainstorming, like just go, you know, I use my computer. So it's just fingers to keyboard, just type, 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 just anything that comes to my mind, throw it on there. And then I just start working through that. And this process I usually do in December so that I have a few weeks to look at this multiple times and iterate and iterate until I really get to a place where I'm pumped. I'm pumped is the right word, really excited about the goals for the next year. Once I kind of align on, on what exactly that is, <clears throat> I do, I throw them on here. If you're looking, I throw all 10 goals on here. 
the full focus planner then walks you through a little bit of the why, which I'm not great at filling this part out, but it basically for each goal, there's this goal detail page. And it kind of helps you break down your key motivations in your next step. And one thing at the very end that I actually think is really powerful is they also have you fill out this piece called celebration. So essentially, if you hit this goal, what, how are you going to celebrate? It doesn't need to be you buy something. It doesn't need to be, you know, you do anything extravagant. Sometimes it's for me, I have put little incentives out there for myself. Like, you know, if I hit this financial number, I get to do X or uh, if we hit this number, we get to go travel here. Like it can be things that are tangible like that. And it can just be in my mind, like I had some health goals last year that I finally achieved after forever of trying different things. And it was just purely the joy of knowing I was able to achieve that and something I've been working on for a very long time. I don't want to spend too long on this podcast going into the in-depths of the full focus planner, but I will give you guys a few of the key components. So the, obviously the goals in the front is the rudder. That's what's driving my days, my weeks, my months, and ultimately my year to be successful. If I then fast forward, I think one, one process that has been new for me since I started using the full focus planner that to be honest, has become such a powerful part of my week to get ready for the next is this section in here. There's one before every single week called the weekly preview. And what you do is you, you take a look at your, your, your yearly goals. And then it helps you review you know, events for the upcoming week. So basically it has you look at your calendar and, and write down things that you know are going to take time. It has you review big projects that you're currently working on, your specific tasks. So we can get into maybe on another episode what task tools, and honestly, I've used a few, just to brain dump and keep track of everything that you're working on, and then any other commitments. And as you look at all of that and then say, hey, knowing your annual goals, knowing what's on your plate this week, what are your weekly big three? So if you look back on this week, next Sunday, if you had three major things that got done that made it a successful week, what would those be? And typically for me, those weekly big three are actually building blocks for one to three of my annual goals. Again, it sounds so simple, but if you do that 52 weeks a year, and I'll get into what the daily process looks like, but if you do that 52 weeks a year, you start to get to a place where you're making tangible progress on things that are important to you and are part of your yearly, yearly, yearly goal progress. So this weekly, you know, this process probably takes me 30 minutes I try to do it, you know, at some point on Sundays, just headphones in, really trying to think for the week. Um, they have some other, they have basically like daily pages here where you can put like big key things. I usually put on there just things that are repetitive that I know I want to make sure I tackle each week. So for me, it's trying to record at least one podcast as well as publishing and marketing another podcast. So I usually try to like think ahead and plan. I put it on my calendar, but I also write it out in here and it's just Something about writing it down and putting it on the calendar helps isolate for me um, getting it done. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. So then, the, then each section after that, I'm going to flash this up again. You'll see, you'll see that there's a, it's an open spread. So on the left side, you know, it's each, each day has its own spread. And on the right, there's just a big open space for taking notes. On the left, the key thing here is there's a daily big three. So again, we already, we already planned out our annual goals. We already looked at our week and decided on what's a weekly big three that would make this week successful. Then you sit down and you say, okay, what are, what are three things I can get done today that help me build to that weekly goal and or an annual goal, right? And just, it can be anything. It doesn't, every day does not have to have three things that help you achieve the weekly big three and or your annual goals. But the more you can shove in there helps you prioritize things that are actually going to help you achieve your yearly goals. Some days for me, it's very tangible. It's a piece of that weekly big three gets done today, or it's a stepping stone for an annual goal that also goes there. And some days it's just something really, really important that I know I got to get done. And it doesn't necessarily build to a goal or a weekly big three. But just by knowing that, it helps me put in my brain, okay, today I know I got to prioritize these big three things. Now for me, and I talk about this openly on, on the podcast with Megan and Michael, I am horrible about 
not only planning my big three, but also filling up this entire section of, I think there's 20 available other tasks you could do for the day. I'm famous for over signing up for what I can do in a day and, and not getting through it all. So I'm trying to get better and better about really boiling the ocean, picking my big three, and then isolating really important things I know I have to get done, usually for work or family or the podcast or just something that, you know, it's, it's business critical most of the time. On the right side, I've gotten into the habit of every morning I start off, I just, I write some gratitude. So I'll, I write gratitude and then just one thing I'm grateful for. For me, it's, it's so simple, like writing something that you're grateful for every day. I've been doing that for almost as long as I've had the full focus planner. And for me, this is something where, man, it's just, it's so simple to do and it makes you feel so good. It really does. It makes you feel really, really blessed for all the good things that are happening in your life. So, so gratitude is, is a big one. And then at the very bottom, which this is one, something I love is called the daily win. And so it just allows you to write down one thing that was a big win for the day. So you do that every day. You do that every day. You pick out your big three, you keep building, building, building each week, you review what worked, what didn't, what's important for the next week. And then before long, if you're looking at this, you fill up an entire quarter's notebook and you're on to the next. This process, I'm telling you, over the last two to three years has allowed me to hit goals that I thought I would never achieve. It's also helped me hit goals that um, I think without this, genuinely, I would not have hit. So again, I'm, I'm not sponsored by Full Focus. I, you, I'm sure there's other tools out there that do anything similar. I've tried to do this in just a plain notebook because these, these notebooks are actually kind of expensive, to be honest, for what they are. However, I keep going back to them. Every time I've tried to do it in a plain notebook, it just, for me, it's too easy to just lose the, the stability of the structure that's here. Um, so anyway, I hope today helps somebody. If, if you have any questions about my process, the full focus planner, goal setting, trying to get 1% better, like I said, really it's every day this process helps me get 1% better. That was the whole point of the, the title of this episode. But again, if anyone has questions, happy to you know hop on a quick call. Would love to explain it to anybody who who is interested or, or wants to get into it. I know everyone that has tried this planner personally that I know has felt similar success um, in whatever their goals are. And again, these goals can be massive; they can be small. The point is, it tangibly forces you to put tasks every day or a few days a week, minimally, to start building towards your goal. And I think what happens is a lot of times. We set these audacious goals that they need little building blocks over a long period of time to truly be successful. And taking that first step is always the hardest. So I hope today was, was a helpful podcast. And I hope all of you listening got something out of this. Like I said, always feel free to reach out. I will put um, some contact info into the show notes. Um, you can email me or even shoot me a text or call. Uh, I'd be happy to to help anybody who's who's interested in, in using something like this or this process. All right, everybody. We have an awesome guest actually scheduled for next week that I'm fired up about. I hope that uh, all of you guys enjoyed the podcast and we'll be back soon.